All right, here we go. In this video, I'm going to take a break from uh, detecting drones, which is what I have been doing in like the last few videos. I'm still working on that and pretty excited to show some stuff here in the near future. But let's take a moment and look at AIS. So <clears throat> in this case, automatic identification system. Uh, I think of it as a, a transponder like setup on a boat that's going to send some information off uh, VHF in the marine band. You can uh, just do a little more research on the message format and, and other things that are related to AIS but I had some questions about AIS catcher and uh, also I'm pretty interested in kind of tying it all together back into uh, ATAC like I've shown with the drone uh, pieces. What's interesting is some of some of the stuff, uh, some of the necessary pieces uh, have been in Dragon OS, especially uh, to to simulate AIS. I'll refer to it as simulate. Uh, you can do this, uh, and I'm going to do this, uh, of course, in, in an environment that protects any sort of uh, signals from going out over the air because I don't want to disrupt anything. I don't want to cause any issues. Uh, I'm mainly just looking for a way because I don't, I'm not near any ships, so I just want to check something called AIS catcher that everything is working in Dragon OS. Um, AIS simulator is actually in Dragon OS. The, the only catch was uh, at the time that it was installed I used a particular fork here uh, from uh, this gentleman that has went through and converted over the years a lot of 3.8 out of tree modules to 3.10 and he did so for the AIS simulator. There has been some updates, uh, you know, within this last uh, two-year uh, mark here on the main project, which I have pulled up here. Of which is this AIS simulator uh, Python file was added back. Uh, maybe some other fixes were included in there. So I just want to show quickly how to swap out what is in Dragon OS if needed with the newer AIS simulator. We could even build the GR AIS simulator uh, real quick again just if we wanted to ensure that we have the latest and greatest. And then uh, we'll get to all the other pieces here but let, let's take care of this. I'll try and make the screen a little bit bigger. If we look in the user source directory we're going to see uh, that there is an AIS simulator directory there. I'm just going to go ahead and remove it. Shouldn't cause any issues here. If you want, you could always make a backup of that. And we're going to git clone the main project down. I'm going to change into AIS simulator, the gr AIS underscore simulator directory. And just for the heck of it, we're going to make a build directory, change into it, do a sudo cmake. Just, I'll just make it bone stock. Everything is in Dragon OS to run this again. We can uh, throw some cores at this to kind of get this to build faster. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build it with just uh, check install so it makes a dev package and we will install it over top of what is already in Dragon OS. That's a fairly simple process. I just I'll just do the check install so we can um, you know maintain that ability to to uninstall it and update it as needed versus just running sudo make shouldn't take too much longer here should be about built so uh, what I'm gonna do is just kind of accept the defaults until I get here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it gr-ais and because I kind of messed up when I first built this I'll just show you what I'm talking about if you were to run sudo app remove ais simu or sorry gr-ais simulator you'll see that I had built it with a name just like that instead of the underscore in it so make sure I spelled this right simulator enter. It's going to build that. Uh, 
no, I don't need to list out what's uh, going to be inside the home directory, nor do I want to include them. So I'll say, should I exclude them? Yes. That's going to build a Debian package and install it over top of the one that is already installed. You can see it sitting right there. Doesn't hurt sudo ld config, although not really needed in this case because it was already installed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come up to that top level directory of the project. And I'm going to pause here. I'm going to jump over to, let's close this one out. I'm going to jump over to AIS Catcher. In the latest Dragon OS, I put AIS Catcher uh, installed. And so the binary is there. But if you wanted to update, I unless something changes from the time that I uh, put this video out, it seems to be fairly, fairly safe to use the, the script. You could always build it manually, but this script right here to install via this script, this copied and pasted and ran within Dragon OS, uh, especially on an older build where you might not have the AIS catcher installed, does seem fine, meaning uh, it may pull in a couple of extra dependencies, but it doesn't seem to um, try and overwrite any of the drivers that are in Dragon OS for the SDRs. So that's good because I don't really want that to happen. And uh, yeah, that'll get you the latest build of AIS Catcher. Uh, what we're going to do though is we're going to run that. <clears throat> and uh, I guess at this point I'll point out if you're listening and following along, I have a HackRF and an RTL SDR version 4 plugged into a War Dragon. Okay, the HackRF is going to generate our AIS messages that, um, if I didn't already say it, is uh, in, a, in a protected environment, uh, essentially direct connected with attenuation. Let's just put it that way, uh, so that we're not sending out any AIS messages over the air. Um, I, I just want to point that out because I don't want to cause any issues here. And this is just for experimentation and just seeing, hey, the AIS catcher works, which if I get around to it, um, I'll come back to this video and show how we should be able to get this information into uh, attack server and ATAC. But not for this, not for this video. All I'm going to do is start up our A AIS catcher. You don't really need the user bin because uh, you could just do AIS catcher. I'm going to run it on port 8100. So we can see it see, uh, you know, recognizes the RTL SDR version 4 and it's just going to run in the back here, ground here and be ready to decode our AIS messages. In fact, if I was to go to localhost 8100, I should get my AIS catcher interface see some information about the system. We've got our plots, our ships, and then the map. I'll zoom out. So, all right, so we've got that running. And what we're going to do now is we're going to run our Python 3-U AIS simulator.py. So, uh, yeah, I'm not a hundred percent certain why it's wanting to to do that there, but that but that's that's fine. I'll I'll take a look at it later. Now, what we want to do is we'll navigate. Uh, you could do it command line. I'm just going to do file manager. We're going to go to our user. SRC source and then AIS simulator web app. Really, you're just wanting to open this HTML in a browser. And what this is doing is making a connection to the flow graph that's kind of running behind the scenes here. Let me let me get this situated here so we can see what's going on. We don't need to see this anymore. All right, 
right, so we can kind of see what's going on here in the background. The hacker F is going to be used to send an AIS message over to the RTL SDR, which is running with AIS Catcher. Uh, you've got your uh, maritime mobile service identity that's defaulted here. You can uh, increase this by one, like 63, 64, if you wanted to see multiple uh, messages from different ships uh, coming through. Uh, some uh, position, you know, related reports have uh, defaulted uh, latitude and longitude. So let's just give it a shot here. Uh, let's see. We'll try and send a message. Pay attention back here. We should see uh, there was an indication that a message uh, went out over the HackRF. You can see that the RTL, SDR, and AIS catcher decoded that. And then you've got your information in here in AIS catcher. So you can use this to validate the whole chain here is working. So if you were by some, some you know, an area where you needed to be uh, and you had your AIS catcher running, then you should be getting uh, information which, uh, you know, in this case, kind of a bad example. It's not, uh, you know, you probably obviously see some things out in the water, depending on uh, what kind of message that you're doing. Let's just uh, say, for example, we'll do we'll do 63. Let's just change this some, um, and we'll send another one. Give it a second. Oh, I was almost close to the to the water there. So that is working. That's really all I was going to show here. Uh, if there's any questions, ask in the in the comments. Uh, what I will point out is the AIS cot though. So displays ships in TAC. What interests me is the mention that uh, you know once the AIS is decoded, like it talks about here, by AIS catcher should be able to forward to AIS cot in order to change to cursory on target and transmit it to TAC. So if I get some time I kind of come back around to this because we already showed how we could use the AIS or sorry the what was it ADSB cot and how that was set up in a previous video and you know ultimately we were getting our aircraft back uh, from uh, TAR 1090 and uh, which that's a whole nother rabbit hole I've, I've updated some things especially on the War Dragon with TAR 1090 the uh, person that uh, develops a lot of that had pointed out I could uh, change some kind of back-end stuff to reduce the amount of dockers and, and that's, a, that's a whole nother thing but anyways you can see how you can responsibly test this AIS catcher there is other command line uh, options that could be used to, to, to decode AIS messages, but this seems pretty, uh, pretty what am I, what am I, uh, robust in, in all the uh, things that it, it has that it can do here. So, all right, I hope that helps. Uh, yeah, have fun uh, picking up, I guess, ship related information.